Good afternoon, my name is Kevin Yam and I am a data scientist. I'm also a former high school mathematics and computer science teacher. Uh, the project that I'll be presenting today as part of Galvanized Capstone is AI legal research. The idea behind this came from the election of Donald Trump in 2016 and his policy to deport illegal aliens. In the spring, this policy resulted in two of my students being deported and I thought to myself, couldn't I do something that could help low-income families be able to afford representation in courts? So, to start off, my question to you is, have you ever had a legal issue? Do you think lawyers are a bit expensive? Well, you'd be right. The chart on the left shows the average uh, cost for a divorce attorney. You can see that it's about $250. And the chart on the right you can see that one of the biggest problems in the law and in research in general is that it takes up so much uh, uh, lawyers' times. You can see that 94% of lawyers spend 15% uh, or more of their time on legal research. Part of the problem is the way the current searches are structured. You can tell from this, from these three search queries that are typical, that it's pretty complicated uh, to try to get a search, uh, an accurate search going. And my question is, couldn't we do something different? Couldn't we have a, an easier system that can get us equally high, highly accurate results? And I'll show a demo as to the project that I built. And I'll describe what's happening on the screen. The idea here being you can type a free query just like you would Google any search terms. Uh, the question I Googled here or I searched here is what is the penalty for drug trafficking? And you just simply ask, ask away. You get your results, you find something that you think is interesting, you go to, go to that page and it automatically highlights the top three most relevant uh, paragraphs uh, that are related to your search term or your query. So you have to spend so much time looking through the whole, sometimes very long court cases. And again, the idea here being, the idea being uh, the process we, uh, I began by analyzing court cases, and this could be easily expandable to include uh, federal codes, statutory laws, but today I begin, and for this project's purposes, I begin with court cases themselves at the uh, circuit and Supreme Court level. So to run down this, uh, the most important parts of this graph here, as you can see that I use uh, Python to scrape cases, scrape about 6,000, I index them, in this, uh, in this process here, applied some natural language uh, techniques. And the way that the search query works is that a user inputs the query. Remember, at this point, everything's been processed. Uh, there's a spell correction that happens. Uh, the, there's a parser that parses the query. Uh, and there's uh, the function that implements the actual search. And this is where all the, the secret sauce comes in, where the, the search terms get matched. And then there's, they get scored and ranked, and the results come out in the, in the, as, as an end product result. And to describe a little bit about one aspect of the scoring function is um, network graphs along with cosine similarity. I displayed some uh, useful, uh, useful visualizations that show you how the, the network graphs work. What you're seeing here is a, uh, a graph of court cases mapped onto this uh, screen and what you're seeing is around the court cases are citations. So you can see that some of these cases here are very, they share a lot of citations. This can allow you to reveal most important cases. And you can see that some of the cases on, on the outside are not as related, so they're gonna be farther away from the other cases. What this allows us to do is it allows us to detect communities that um, are important. And uh, let's say you have a search, you can identify other cases that are very, very similar to that case, and you can identify them. The specific graph that I was able to use here, it's called a network graph with weighted edges. The idea here being that the edges or the lines between the actual court cases are the number of citations the court cases share. This right here is the tool, is one of the tools that I use to make a recommendation. Um, so you can see some of these cases share almost six different citations and that allows me to make a recommendation of how similar those two cases might be. If in case you click on a result and you find it relevant, then you want to look at more results, and this is how the recommendation system works. Future um, uh, work on this uh, will uh, includes uh, machine learning techniques 
that can uh, create many different graphs and uh, find the optimal usage of those graphs. And I definitely, um, that's something I'm, uh, my team and I are definitely working on. And here's some of the tools that I used uh, in this project. You can see that I've, I've kind of grouped them here by processing and, and language. Uh, on the right hand corner, you can see some, uh, these are the ones that I've used heavily on sklearn, textblog, Jensen. These are natural language processing tools, some visualizations on the right, and some Amazon Web Services on the top left. Uh, and that's it, my name is Kevin. Um, if you have more questions, please feel free to reach out. I have my GitHub here, so if you want to check out more of the methodology, and the LinkedIn, please feel free to add me. Thank you very much, appreciate it.